Hey everyone, I'm Raj and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the complete logo design process of mine. I will explain all the tools and methods that I'm going to use to design this particular logo. I'm designing this logo for a fast food restaurant called Happy Burger. So I'm trying to combine a cheerful face with a burger and design some kind of playful logo, right? For the sketching process, I'm using Huion HS64 mini drawing tablet with Autodesk Sketchbook, which is a super cool drawing application. Alright, my sketch is almost done and let's jump into Adobe Illustrator. First of all, let's create a new file. I'll give 1000 points for the width and 1500 points for the height. Then CMYK as the color mode. Alright, let's save it. Now I'm going to bring our sketch into this document. Let's go up to file and place. With the sketch file selected, let's press place. And then we can hit the left mouse button anywhere in the document to place the sketch. Now I'm lowering the opacity of the sketch. Next, I'm going to fix the position of the sketch. To do that, let's go up to Object, down to Lock, and finally Selection. Now, I want to place a vertical guideline here. Before that, let's enable rulers for this document. Let's go to the View menu. Not Guides, it should be Rulers and then Show Rulers. I'm going to click on the ruler and drag a guide out and then I'm releasing the mouse button right at this point. If we want, we can lock these guides simply by pressing right mouse button and choosing lock guides. Now I'm gonna get the pen tool and set a stroke color. We can get the pen tool easily from the toolbar, right? To set a stroke color, we have to select the stroke box first. Then we should enable this small button right here, which is the color option. To change the stroke color, let's double click on the stroke box first. It will bring up the color picker dialog box and then we can pick any color we want. I'm gonna pick black, right? Okay, now we are ready to do the tracing stuff. I'm gonna place the first anchor point right here on the guideline. While holding down the shift key, let's click and drag the handle to the left side a little bit. We don't need to hold down the shift key for every anchor point we create, okay? We have to use the shift key only when we need to keep the direction of an anchor point handle horizontally, vertically or on a 45 degree angle. I hope you have got the point. Okay, let's move forward. We can undo our mistakes simply by going to edit and then undo. Or we can hit the keyboard shortcut Ctrl Z. If you are using Mac, the keyboard shortcut should be Command Z. If we need to make a sharp corner like here, we have to click on the anchor point before moving further.
Okay, let's close the path. If it's necessary, we can adjust the path using anchor point handles. To select a particular anchor point, first we have to pick the direct selection tool from the toolbar. Now I'm going to trace the inner edge of this line here. By the way, we can zoom in our artboard by pressing Ctrl plus and zoom out by pressing Ctrl minus. If you are using a Mac, you have to use Command plus and Command minus. Also we can use mouse scroll up and scroll down while holding down the Alt key or Option key for zooming operations. Ok, let's select both of these shapes using the selection tool. And now I'm gonna click on the minus front option in the pathfinder panel. If you cannot find the pathfinder panel here, you can go up to window and down to pathfinder to enable it. Let's click on minus front. Now we have the exact shape that we want to continue with. Now I'm gonna use the same method to complete the rest. Ok, I have almost completed the left half of the sketch. Now I'm gonna reflect a copy of that. In order to do that, I should select all the objects with the selection tool. Then I have to click on the rotate tool and hold for a little while. Now I can get the reflect tool. If you want, you can just hit letter O on your keyboard to activate the reflect tool easily. Then I'm gonna place the reference point by clicking on the guideline. Now we can reflect the selection by dragging it to the right hand side while pressing and holding down both Alt and Shift keys. You have to use Option key instead of Alt key if you are a Mac user, okay? Now I'm gonna unite all the objects here. Let's select all the objects and then I'm gonna go to Pathfinder panel and click on Unite option. Alright, now I'm gonna trace other parts of the logo. Alright, let's unite them. Okay, if you look closely, you can see couple of sharp corners here and there. Now I'm gonna smooth them out. Let's grab the direct selection tool. Then I'm gonna select the anchor point that I need to smooth. And then I can use this live corner widget to convert this sharp corner into a rounded corner like this.
All right, now I'm gonna draw sesame seeds on the top of the burger. We need ellipse tool for that. Let's click on the rectangle tool and hold for a while. Now I'm gonna pick the ellipse tool. Let's draw an ellipse. Then I'm gonna select it with the selection tool and go up to object, down to path and offset path from the submenu. I'm gonna set the offset to minus 4. Then I'm selecting both ellipses and I'm gonna hit minus front. Now I'm duplicating this shape by dragging it while holding down Alt key. Of course, it's Option key if you are using a Mac. Let's unite all the shapes. Alright, now I can delete both the sketch and the guideline. First, I'm gonna delete the guide. We can unlock it by pressing right mouse button and choosing unlock guides. Let's select the guide and press the delete key on the keyboard. To delete the sketch, we have to go up to object and down to unlock all. Let's select the sketch and press the delete key on the keyboard. Instead of boring outline version of the logo, I'm going to fill it with black, right? In this case, we can simply use the swap option right here to do that. Now I'm going to start the coloring process of our logo. Let's get the rectangle tool first. Then I'm selecting the fill box. Let's open the color picker dialog box simply by double clicking on the fill box. Then I'm gonna set the color to a lighter one like this. Now you can see I'm drawing a rectangle that completely covers our design. Let's send the rectangle to the back of our logo design. Let's start with selecting the rectangle. Then we can hit the right mouse button and go to arrange and then we can choose send to back. Then let's select both logo and the rectangle. And then we should click on the divide option right here in the pathfinder panel. Now you can see all the objects here are working as a single unit. They all are moving together, right? So we have to ungroup them first. All we have to do is right click and choose ungroup. Alright, now I'm going to delete this part which we don't need anymore. Let's hit the delete key on the keyboard. Now we have another issue. You can see all the objects here are working as separate units. So I'm going to unite all the black pieces here into a single unit, right? Let's grab the magic wand tool from the toolbar. And then all we have to do is click on any of these shapes which are black. It will make all the black pieces are selected. Now we can go to pathfinder panel and click on unite. That's it. Now all the black shapes are working as a single unit. Now I'm gonna set base colors for other areas. Simply we can use the color picker dialog box to set colors as we want. Now I'm gonna add shadows and highlights to our logo. Actually, there are a couple of ways to do this thing. But for this tutorial, I'm showing you only one method that we can use to add shadows and highlights, right? So let's start with shadows. With the pen tool, we can create a shape that covers the entire area 
that we want to add the shadow. Then I'm going to select both shadow area and the particular shape that we need to add the shadow on, right? Then I'm going to grab the shape builder tool from the toolbar and while holding down the alt key or the option key if you are a Mac user, let's click on the area that we want to remove, got it? Now I'm going to set a kind of darker shade of the base color for the shadow. You can simply open the color picker dialog box and set any color you want, right? It doesn't matter at all. But here, I'm going to show you a handy method that you can use to enhance your coloring process, right? Let's select the shadow area with the selection tool. Then I'm going to get the eyedropper tool from the toolbar. And then I'm clicking on the shape that has filled with the base color. It will instantly change the color of the shadow area to the base color. Did you see that? Then I'm going to open the color picker dialog box. And now I can pick a shade much closer to the base color very easily. Actually it's a super simple method that we can use to pick accurate colors than playing with random colors. I hope you guys have got the point. Since I'm using the same technique to create all the shadow areas as well as highlights, now I'm gonna speed up the process a little bit.
All right, now I'm changing the outline color of the logo to a kind of darker brown. Okay guys, now I'm gonna add the logo text. Let's grab the type tool and click on the artboard. Now we can type our logo text like this. Actually, I want to break the logo text into two lines. So I'm going to add another text line here. Let's select both text objects and change the font to Montserrat Black. You guys can download Montserrat font pack from Google Fonts if you want. Let's make the upper text line a little bit thinner, right? Let's go with bold. And now I'm going to scale in the logo text down a little bit. We can do that simply by using these handles. To maintain the proportions as well as the center points of the text objects, we should hold down both shift and alt keys while resizing. Use option key instead of alt key if you are using a Mac. Now I'm changing the text color using the eyedropper tool. And also I think it would be better if I can increase the space between letters a little bit. For that we should open the character panel first. We can simply open the character panel by clicking here on the link which says character. Or you can just use Ctrl T to open the character panel. If you are a Mac user, use Command key instead of Control key, right? Well, we can change the character space from here. So let's do some more adjustments to the text objects until we get the best result. Now I'm doing some color adjustments as well. Okay, I'm happy with this result. So I'm gonna convert the logo text to outlines. Let's select both text objects and click right. And then I'm choosing create outlines. That's it. Then I'm gonna group everything of the logo mark. Let's click right and select group. Then I'm going to click on this button which is horizontal align center option. Then I'm doing the same thing on the logo text. Now I need some space at the bottom of the artboard. So I'm moving the whole logo up. And then I'm scaling the logo down a little bit. Don't forget to hold down ALT or OPTION key with SHIFT key while resizing, right? Ok, now I'm gonna duplicate our logo. We can duplicate an object easily by dragging it while holding down ALT or OPTION key. Now we have a copy of our logo and I'm gonna color it with some shades of yellow. Before that, we have to ungroup the logo mark. Let's hit the right mouse button and choose ungroup. We can select multiple objects at the same time by clicking on objects while holding down the shift key. 
Now we can use both the color picker dialog box and the eyedropper tool to add colors as we want. Let's speed up the process. Alright, let's create an outline version of the logo easily by using our object duplicating technique. Let's delete this one. Now I'm gonna create a light colored version of the logo which can be used on darker backgrounds. Let's duplicate the logo again. Then I'm going to select the outline and hit the delete key. Then we can select all the shapes here and click on the unit option in the pathfinder panel. Then I'm going to change the color to a lighter gray. Let's move our logo out of the artboard to see how it's working on a darker background. Now I'm going to show you a mistake that some logo designers make with these kind of light colored logo versions. Mostly by beginner designers. They just change the color of the outline to a lighter color, like this one. I should say, sometimes it works, but in most cases it ruins all the features of the logo. So be careful when you create lighter color versions of logos. Ok, let's group all of these logo versions separately. Now I'm gonna create a background layer. Let's add a new layer and drag it down to the bottom. Then I'm going to create a rectangle. Let's select the rectangle tool. And then we can click anywhere on the working area to open the rectangle dialog box. It will allow us to set the size of the rectangle as we want. I'm going to give 1000 points for the width and 500 points for the height. Make sure this little button right here is not enabled when you enter your values, right? Then I'm going to align the rectangle to top left corner of the artboard. We can use align options in the control panel to align it. Now I'm going to change the color of the rectangle. Let's create a duplicate of the rectangle and align it with the original rectangle like this. and I'm going to set the color to white. Then I'm going to create a square shape by setting both width and height to 500 points. Let's align it to the bottom left corner of the artboard. Now I'm going to set its color same as the first rectangle. Now I'm going to get a duplicate of the square and align it to the bottom right corner of the artboard. And let's change its color to a darker color like this. Now we can see our light colored logo version very clearly. Then I'm changing the color of the outline logo version to the color of our last rectangle. One final thing to do. Let's align our logos to their background rectangles. So I'm going to select both rectangle and the logo like this. And then I'm clicking on the rectangle. Just one click, right? Now you can see the outline of the rectangle is highlighted. That means the rectangle is the key object here. So now I can use align options to align the logo with the background rectangle. 
Let's do the same for the rest. Alright, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Leave a like, share the video and feel free to drop your thoughts and questions below in the comment section. And finally, if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications.